Now, every musical has music, but The Lion King's combination of traditional African instruments and rhythms gives the show its truly unique sound. And I've got to say that when the orchestra strikes up from down there and around this theatre, that sound is absolutely epic. But what are the origins of The Lion King's music? And how does it tell the story of Simba? Well, that's exactly what we're about to find out. When we went to Elton John and Tim Rice and asked them to write these songs, we didn't know what that would become. When we put those songs in the hands of um, Hans Zimmer and Mark Mancina, two remarkable musicians who shaped those. But then when Lebo comes in and what Lebo puts on it made us rethink all the music again. When the movie came out, it was such a hit. The, the film soundtrack was very successful. But we asked all these song creators to come up with another album. And it's called Rhythm of the Pride Lands. And it was music inspired by The Lion King, some music included in The Lion King, and in some cases, music created for that was never used in The Lion King movie. And that's what Julie Taymor based her entire conception of the stage show on. The songs that Lebo created from He Lives in You to um, Halalela, uh, uh, Shadowland, some of these songs that weren't in the original movie add a, a, a depth to the, to the story and to the score that are, again, I, I don't have any other word, spiritual. None of that was anticipated from the beginning. And I think because it was always a sense of discovery, how each artist was affecting the work of what came before them and added on to it, that gave us what is now the iconic sound of The Lion King. As well as providing a great soundtrack to the action, the music clearly has an important purpose to serve. But how does it help tell the story to audiences around the world? So Lion King really celebrates African culture in all, all aspects. So we do the show in many, many different countries. Oftentimes it's their first exposure to African music. We go to South Africa every year and um, audition South African singers and performers. And they are, there are about six South Africans in every single show. And what we tend to do is we, we use them as the core basis for the, for the sound of the, of the ensemble. So that means wherever the show is, they can feel and hear the a traditional and authentic African sound. The music is used in different ways to signpost different characters. For the hyenas, we use rock music because rock has an edge and the hyenas are dangerous, edgy, for Scar, he has, uh, he's very articulate. So his song, Be Prepared, is partly spoken, partly sung, which shows off his articulation. And, I, and I, we should mention Rafiki too, because she's the heartbeat of the show. She's the heart of the show. And she's, she's a South African character, so all her music is actually the most authentically African. With African drums being such a huge part of the show, I went to meet one of the show's percussionists, Damien Manning. I mean, we have some of the most iconic African drums that were developed centuries ago. Uh, this one here, the djembe, is from West Africa, um, from the Malian Empire. And the griots, the storytellers within the, within the communities, would use these drums for ceremonies, to, for weddings, for funerals, for occasions. And it was a tool to bring people together, to help with storytelling and to unify communities. Yeah and it's been doing that thousands of years, and now it's here in the Lyceum. And that's just one of the drums we've got here. Yes, this is a real deal. I mean, there's like a percussion shop in here. Yeah. Really <laughs> so what else have we got? We've got the Jun Jun, which gives a nice bass sound. The djembe, which I mentioned before. Now this has three sounds. This would be what we would call the lead drum. So it has to be quite powerful. The bass, the tone, and the slap. Everything has a rhythm, everything has a beat. So it's really important for the producers to, to have um, the African music jump out at them, leap out into the audience. And so to do that, they put live percussionists on either side. So the audience feel that they're enveloped by the music of Africa. We have the bongos, which will be played more with the fingers. They give a bit more of an accent. It does help when you hear these sounds that you can see where they're coming from. Because a lot of these instruments, I don't think Western audience would have ever seen before. The music is from Africa. 
we are all supposed to be from Africa. So maybe, maybe we can relate to it in that sense. It's the music that has an authenticity, um, diversity that everybody can relate to. Story is the most important thing, but it's how the story is told through the music. Is there any chance that I might be able to have a little dabble? Of course there is. Yeah? Let's, uh, let's try with the djembe, the I, main African I, drum. Okay. okay, let's see if you can give me a... One, two, three, go. That's it. That's the one. Hey. Hey, ba. Oh. Brilliant. Well done. Oh, <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> the music is authentic. The music is um, vibrant, real, and also um, I think the music is really well crafted. It is impossible to overstate both the power of the music in The Lion King and the importance of each of those artists who created it, with one layering on the other that gives us the strength of what I think that music has today.